Hey everyone, welcome back and in this video I want to discuss a very popular question which you might have seen on a lot of social media fronts and a lot of different opinions on that. Is JavaScript actually a bad language or not? Let's just go ahead and critically discuss this point because this involves a lot of background information on JavaScript and what exactly do people criticize about the language. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before actually getting to the question, is JavaScript a bad language or not? Let's actually understand how JavaScript came to be. So JavaScript was a requirement for web browsers when web browsers were becoming a thing we needed a certain scripting language to add interactivity to the pages so you would have heard or read about things like javascript was created in seven days 14 days something like that and that's true the initial spec was created in a small amount of time but since then javascript supported in basically every single browser right any browser which you see supports javascript now the way javascript works is each of these browsers for example ships a engine a JS engine, Safari ships WebKit, Firefox has its own engine, SpiderMonkey, Chrome has Chromium. So each of these engines ship a little bit of more like a virtual machine in itself, which reads your JS code and converts it into bytecode, which is executed by your computer. Now, when you say that JavaScript is a bad programming language, when people say that, they mostly refer to just two things. The first thing is there is no type system as at all. Plus there are a lot of quirks in JavaScript language. And the second thing which people refer to is performance. And more often than not, people don't really mind the second point that much as they mind the first one. And of course, there is a reason for both of these points, there is a reason why type system does not exist, why there are so many quirks, but the way JavaScript was formed, obviously it is not a statically typed language, it's a dynamically typed language. This was a decision that was taken long back ago, and if we could change it, probably we would change it, but the reason the type system and the quirks is still there, I mean, why you still see supported things from all the way back to 2000 and 1999 and that sort of syntax, that is because web fundamentally believes in a way which is backwards compatible. So you're gonna see that JavaScript and all these engines try to not deprecate or not remove any sort of critical web API, whether that's in JavaScript, whether that's in HTML or CSS, to not break web pages. Because if we had the option to just remove or just completely change, do a breaking change to these APIs, JavaScript as a language would have been a lot better. It would have been a lot better in scoping, it would have been a lot better in variable declaration, it would have been a lot better in edge cases, the typecasting system and so on. But a lot of JavaScript bugs are actually, you know, in one way or another, are in production in a lot of websites. And if you fix the language in itself, if you fix the engine, maybe someday Safari decides that, hey, we're gonna just remove the support of var keyword at all because let and const are now supported that's gonna actually break a lot of code on the web because we don't know how much code is actively using war for the declaration how many libraries are using it how many npm packages are using it how many old websites are using it how many cloud functions written in javascript which are automatically upgraded to new engines are using it so there's a lot of dependency on older features as well that is why web in general is very careful in deprecating old features and that's why javascript tries to patch things over so we don't really fix things but we patch things over over. For example, moving to ES5, we introduced const and let, which are two better ways of declaring variables. We also added scoping for const and let into block scoping instead of function scoping, which is much better and much less confusing compared to the war keyword. And a bunch of other quirks and fixes as well were along the way. As for this, like I said, JavaScript in itself is not a typed language. So these restrictions again apply on this because the moment you try to shift a dynamic language to a static type language it's basically not gonna work right you can imagine like you would have to ship two versions where you also expect the typed version of js to compile properly so you would need standards you would need stuff maybe it happens five years down the line i don't know but with current javascript's ecosystem you're gonna face the same problem so what do we do for this Again, we patch it. We patch it in a way where we use systems like TypeScript. Now TypeScript is again, some people love it. Some people say that, hey, TypeScript is just a band-aid. 
for covering the regged JavaScript type system. And in a sense, both are true because TypeScript actually is basically something you need after your code base hits a certain complexity, certain lines of code, because it's almost impossible to maintain a fully vanilla JavaScript code base without any actual help from the IDE or from the IntelliSense system or some sort of system which checks your stuff at right time, right? So we have build time, we have runtime. For build time, you could have TypeScript. And then on runtime, for example, you could have end-to-end -end testing, something like that. So you need this TypeScript system here because it's it's very important for developer velocity to not just carry uh, all the baggage and weightage of remembering every single type and every single declaration. So it becomes important to have a type system like this. So TypeScript, yes, it's kind of a bandage above JavaScript and it will not be running anytime soon into a browser engine because browser engines are just not optimized to run that. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good bandage if you ask me. The only problem is that TypeScript tends to get very slow when the code base grows, which is also being addressed these days. There has been a Rust implementation of a compiler, not a type checker. Um, type checkers are being built in Rust, Golang. So we'll get there. Eventually, TypeScript in itself would be very fast. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty solid bandage for your startup, for your product. If you're somebody who just uses JavaScript. And trust me, when I say a very good bandage, we use JavaScript, we use TypeScript a lot, pretty much everywhere you see on CodeDAM, from front ends to back ends, even our custom DNS server is written in JavaScript, which is used to resolve the star dot webex.sh domains which you see in the code damn playgrounds so you can imagine like the amount of javascript which is running on code damn is way too high and there was no way we could have built a robust and a clean website without the use of a system like typescript now, the second thing which people point out a lot is the performance factor which is in a lot of cases very true and very relevant because JavaScript, let's be honest, does not have the best performance in the world when compared to other languages. And this is where I want to emphasize a lot when compared to other languages. If you run a DNS server, obviously in JavaScript, it will be much slower than Golang or C or C++. And most DNS servers, for example, would never be implemented in JavaScript. No production DNS server handling millions of queries a second is implemented in JavaScript. But at the same time, as a developer, the velocity of pushing code to production matters a lot sometimes because real world is complex, right? Real world does not have infinite time. If you're running a business, you need to get a feature up because that might attract more users that may lead to you getting more funding and so on, right? And creating a better life for everyone around you. So if you have talent, which only involves JavaScript, shipping that feature in that language for your small scale startup might be the best choice over there, which might not be the best choice performance wise, but is surely a best choice given the circumstances. So what I want to say over here is that the point which people raise when they say performance matters, yes, it absolutely matters. And you should never really build any critical system which might receive millions of traffic or millions of hits per second or maybe even more maybe even less when you have the bandwidth and capacity to choose the right tool you should obviously choose the right tool go C, C++. but you should also consider your case if you are trying to ship something to production it needs to be done quickly it can be modularized or separated later down the line and maybe eventually even converted into the recommended solution but it's not a it's not a app killer thing or a you know a thing to be ashamed of if you're writing something in javascript which could potentially be done by something else in some other language in javascript does it has the worst performance nope does it have the best performance no again but it does has a lot of good performance number one and a lot of speed of shipment if you're already familiar with the web platform if you're familiar with javascript you can write in node.js so you're a back-end developer you can write in the front-end code so you are a front-end developer you can write probably like i said a dns server so you might be someone who's handling a lot of server operations as well and i mean it's it's pretty useful at least to me, it seems like running a company that if you know JavaScript as a developer, you basically are able to program a lot of parts in your tech stack without actually compromising a lot of performance until you hit that good scale, right? Obviously, if you're receiving tens of millions of requests a day, then we might want to shift to a more performant language. I mean, JavaScript can 
theoretically also handle tens of millions of requests today. That's not a lot of requests per second, but you get the idea. So the conclusion is I do agree with most of the things which people point out with JavaScript, but the reality of the thing is it doesn't matter in most cases because the language in itself is obviously not perfect, but it's good enough if you are careful enough. And that's pretty much basically true for a lot of things. I mean, it's not like C++ or Rust makes it impossible to shoot yourself in the foot. It just makes it slightly harder, sure. And you can just borrow a lot of those things in terms of type checking, in terms of performance as well from those languages if you use a little bit of tooling over JavaScript. If you are comfortable with that compromise, that gives you a lot of platforms to code on that's the thing i wanted to say that's all for this video let me know in the comment section what you think is javascript a good language or bad language because i know a lot of people are not real fans of javascript so would love to know your honest review your honest opinion on why do you think except for these two points if javascript is a bad language that's all for this video thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching